You're watching the Auction Network. Welcome back. Since its inception in 1971, the Pilchuck Glass School has been the primary force in the evolution of glass as a means of artistic expression. The school's influence is showcased each year at the Pilchuck Glass School Annual Auction. The finest glass blowers in the business donate their best pieces in an effort to raise funds for the prestigious school. This year's first class event takes place Thursday, October 30th in Seattle, Washington and broadcast live on Auction Network. The auction begins at 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Central Time. Auction Network's Thomas Smiley paid a visit to the Pacific Northwest to uncover one of the best kept secrets in the country, the Bill Chuck Glass School. So where does all this amazing glass come from? There's only one way to find out. We're road tripping to Pilchuck. Wherever there are pockets of glass blowers in the United States, in the center of that pocket is almost always a school. And the size of the pocket uh, is pretty much dependent on the quality of the school. And we've got the good ones. <laughs> the Pilchuck Glass School is located in the foothills of the Cascade Mountains overlooking Puget Sound. Seattle is the center of glass uh, art in, in the United States and, and maybe even in the world. It's growing exponentially. It's, it's growing so rapidly that um, uh, it wouldn't happen if we weren't all working together and helping each other. It, it, it... Let's say I'm a young artist and I am, I am looking at the Piltuck School as an as option. Um, what would you tell me? Well, I think the most important uh, aspect of the school are, are the people that are here, the teachers, the, the, the uh, teaching assistants, the, the other students. It's amazing how much we learn from each other. Mm. There's a, a lot of um, back and forth between what, what's a teacher and what's a student. How have you watched this school change from when it started in 1971? Well, <laughs> the, the changes are huge. Uh, because uh, it was just a cow pasture. There was nothing here but a, a, a circus tent or an army tent and, um, in the beginning. And now there are buildings hidden in the woods around, way more buildings than you would ever imagine. The, the totem pole was to celebrate the three founders of the school. So this is John Hubbard. <laughs> and right above that is Dale with the black uh, stripe across his forehead of and, and one uh, covering one eye and then at the very top the mom of us all is Annie Gould Hauberg and she's wearing Preston's hat which is made completely out of glass sandblasted uh, with the decoration of the raven and you can see now many glass parts yeah. in the, yeah, in the, the totem faces yeah. there's a disc right here too yeah and right here and here's uh, some more like yeah. more here yeah that's incredible so now you have a hot shop here? Yes, the, the hot shop is the, the area where we have the furnaces with molten glass inside the furnace. And we're gonna go down there now and see how they get that glass out and shape it into a variety of sculptural uh, objects. Fantastic. So what he's got is a, a torso, a human torso on the end of that steel rod. And he's using a torch just to spot heat. Right. See yeah. where he is right now? Yeah. That's called a glory hole. Glory hole? Glory okay. hole. And it's now. used for reheating the entire piece. You heat the glass in order to move it. And you use either breath or, or tools. Breath? To, yeah, you blow. Oh, well, that's glass the glass blowing. blowing, of course, of course. And the, the whole um, rhythm of constantly reheating this piece is very important 
so that, that uh, cracks don't develop by getting too cold, nor does it get so hot that it distorts the piece and you lose the shape or the form. And so the glass blower has to constantly work between a certain temperature that would be too hot, mm -hmm. has to stay below that, but above the temperature that would be too cold. The color change is an indication of the heat. The heat. But the, the real indicator um, that we use mostly is the way it moves. Now, why is he rolling it back and forth? Because he's checking the movement. If you don't roll it, it'll oh, you, all I can droop see on the floor. It drooping. Oh my gosh. So now you did this all by blowing? Uh, the, the shape is it's totally hollow, so it is blown, but a lot of it was just using tools and torches. To poking and pushing and yeah. pulling and, and so on. Wow. There, there are many ways to, to stretch the glass and to move the glass around. Mm -hmm. And uh, blowing is one of those ways, but there are, are other processes. So is he going to bring something to add to this guy? We're going to be putting an arm on him. Okay, so an arm. the upper arm section, and that'll go on here, and then there's a forearm at hand. Do, do you want some element of droop? Is that is that like some That's element you know, of it? That's what you're doing. You know it's it's telling, yeah. yeah, it's like a thermometer for us. We know that, that when it's moving a little bit, that we're safe. So now you're keeping it hot enough because you're going to add the arm. So do you have to get Correct. it up to a certain heat? Like what? What is well, this, exactly this happening right now? This can never go below a certain heat, or it'll crack. When it's done, how do you keep it from cracking? What? What? Well, what's? Well, oh, then it goes in the special oven oh, called okay. an annealing so oven. So now is that? Will that be the whole arm, or will he no, do the, the rest all the way the, out to the, the hand? The upper arm, and then he's got a forearm and hand that, that will be added to that. So he made the parts yesterday Those parts for the were arm, made yesterday, yeah. and then he started the torso this morning. Right. When we return, we'll take a sneak peek at the catalog and give you an up-close look at some of the amazing pieces being sold during this year's Pilchuck Glass Auction. To register for future live auctions, go to auctionnetwork.com. 